Hearts is trying to speak to <laughs> a son of Ghana, someone who has lived his life thinking and strategizing in every way, shape, or form as to how to make Ghana a better place in the best way that he knows how. He's together with his teams over the years, created employment for many people. He's done things that have disrupted the financial industry in Ghana at certain points and have thus become the way in which we do things even now in 2023. If you don't know who I'm talking about, it's Captain Prince Kofi Amwabing. He's the founder of the PK Leadership Foundation, and he'll be telling us about that. He's also the proud author of two books. It's not easy to birth two books, you know. Even when you don't have a woman, you're birthing books <laughs> back to back. And we'll talk about that as well. But it is my singular honor to introduce him. Captain, good morning. Good morning. Why did you stop the music? Uh oh, we'll <laughs> come back to it. No, you have to dance. Yeah, I've yeah, yeah. You. Dancing, I, after all, I don't have a problem. Yeah, we'll dance. We'll especially, dance. especially the kind of music we're playing. <laughs> we'll dance. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was raised in Accra. I came yes. to Accra in 1962. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Pen you remember Penworth uh, Kindergarten Preparatory School was in Kanishi? That's where I grew yeah. up. So that's, you must have been about just 10 years old then. Yeah, about. Oh. Uh, I've, I've done the calculation. No, you know? uh, when yeah. I came here, no. yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. I was 10 years old. Oh, so you're 71 okay. this year. Yes. Absolutely, I've yes, been 71. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Oh, wow. Right. So, yeah. so you're an Accra boy? I'm completely Accra <laughs> boy, Kandeshi, Mateko. Okay. Um, that's where I started my life. And uh, so. Jamestown, Buko, all those places, swimming the beach, on the beaches. Uh, in those days, Ghana, Ghana and Accra was nice. Uh, you know, as, as, a, as a, a, a pupil, you pay, I think, tuppence, okay. which was about two pennies, and you could go on the bus anywhere you wanted in Accra. Oh, wow. wow. And the bus service was superb. Wow. Yeah. So okay. what happened to it? Uh, it's about failure in leadership which resulted in failure in institutions and it's got into huge proportion. It's now frightening and scary. And that is why I dedicated my final years, if I may call it so, mm. <laughs> to writing books to document uh, leadership experiences and also to form the PK Amwabi Leadership Foundation. Mm. Because if things are failing, it's just the leadership that mm. is failing. Mm. And it's, it's failing so badly, mm. the decline is frightening. I, I, the question that I have in my mind is, I see people in pockets around the country, you know, exhibiting exceptional leadership. But somehow, it doesn't seem to translate, or not yet anyway, into a general, you know, ramping up of leadership skills across the nation so that they're nas nationally we're benefiting from that. You know? you know the answer to that? What's that? Little drops of water mm -hmm. evaporate. Oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you find one here wow. and one there. There wow. could be maybe about a thousand UTs or yeah. companies yeah. because the, uh, uh, the, the, the platform is set the best can always achieve whatever it is mm. and leadership makes sure that the institutions are working to reward uh, uh, um, meritocracy yeah. and not mediocrity yeah. mm. and that is what we need but yeah. unfortunately when uh, we elect our leaders they are selective in uh, who should sit in which position mm. who should head which institution and it's not and based on merit it's, no, no, no 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 even when it's based on merit they use they, they they use them as puppets mm. Mm. because you have achieved, you have yeah. a qualification yeah. but they are appointed you so what are you going to do yeah so then you do their wishes for them and it is not what we need yeah. in this country yeah oh. the before i mean, I mean i'm sure we're, 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 we're going to dive into the book very soon yeah. uh, but quickly before we do that there's this question that has bugged me for a long time <laughs> now i have a number of them so let me just ask one for now um our culture when you are dragged before the chief's palace, into the chief's palace to go and answer for a purported crime, right? When you apologize, it is considered punishment enough. For so, apologizing? Wapacho, Mumfanchenu. 
Right. And somehow... But, but it will come with a few uh, sheep and uh, drinks. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is that we've translated this thing into Absolutely. the larger discourse of modern Ghana, where when a person says, I'm sorry, oh, it's almost like the embarrassment of forcing a person to say, I'm sorry, is enough punishment. And so we don't seem to be able to fire. We don't, unless we're angry with you. If we're not angry with you, we won't fire. You know... Uh, how did we end up? If like that? you are a party member, yes. you can't fire. Yes. If you are yes. connected to some powerful yes. chief or pastor, we, yes. cannot, we cannot fire, fire you. and yes. so on and so forth. Yes. So you, you hit the nail on the head. The point is that our traditional setting mm. and our culture and behavior is coming from the setup as a chieftaincy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when people are put in positions of trust, as in even leadership of the country yeah. or leadership of institutions, yeah. they think they are the chiefs. Yes. One, you can't even criticize them. Yeah. Two, they do whatever they want. Yeah. And, and because we are a bit docile, yeah. we don't say anything. Yeah. And uh, they appoint their own people. Mm. And knowing our typical setting, as you said, the chief is above the law. Yeah. So his wife is above the law. Yeah. His accountant is above the law. So the laws don't work. <laughs> and we brought this into yes. national development yeah. and the building of institutions. Mm. And that is mm. our problem. Mm. Mm. You see, to explain that, I have something that I call the abundance theory. Because in this world, the environment shapes everything and all living things adapt to the environment. Mm. We had an environment where there was abundance. Oh, yeah. They put us in the best part of the world. A curse of no natural hazards, green vegetation, fantastic climate. You can even be, you can see a madman, 70 years old, yeah. and he, he won't die. No. And, and and therefore, with that kind of environment, we stop thinking, we don't plan, yeah. we don't care about time, yeah. we don't care about maintenance, uh, we have this uh, entitlement thing, yeah. because everybody eats, you, yeah. it's free it's for there, it's free. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and a whole, yeah, lot, of, a whole yeah. lot of negative things, yeah. which came out of the abundance yeah. that we had. Yeah. And we stayed in this for hundreds of thousands of years, yeah. that's what we've been in. So it's become our DNA. Yeah. Yeah. So the typical African, has all these negative things. The worst part is that because everyone was okay, self-sufficient, we do not respect ourselves. Because mm. I didn't need you or you didn't mm. need me. Mm. I'll be okay without you. Exactly. Yeah. And even worse still, we have the pulling down syndrome. It's yeah. like, mommy owns Yeah. And then you are whistling more than me. Yeah, why are you whistling? <laughs> <laughs> How? <laughs> you know, so we have all these yeah. negative things. Yeah. And um, therefore, we have bad we don't love ourselves, we don't respect ourselves, we want to exploit ourselves, we want mm. to pull ourselves down, we are jealous about what people are doing. It's mm. all coming from this theory of abundance. Yeah. It needs to change because the abundance is no more yeah. in most places. Yeah. So the problem with Africa and the why we are not developing is because we are different. Mm. And we are different because of the environment in which mm. we found ourselves. ourselves yeah. And that brings me to the uh, the issue about the leadership program. If you don't understand the people, you cannot lead them. Mm. So you should know who the people are mm. and their behavior and the tendencies and all those before you start leading them. Mm. Now, it looks like a completely hopeless situation for us only because we have democracy imposed on this. Mm. And the democracy will never give us a good leader. Mm. You know? Mm. So the issue is, how do you lead such a people? And there's a bit of hope, but it will not be realized. Hmm. The general thing is that if you want to lead the African, you should respect the African or the human being. You should love them, but you should go by the systems and process and institutions. I absolutely. mean, completely mm. yeah. and absolute discipline about it. Mm. But it's not possible with us. <laughs> because, why, why not? You see, so we because are let me give I you mean, just quickly uh, two examples. One, if the African goes into a place where systems work, we excel. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are Always. even better than yes. even the owners yes. of that system. Yes. Two, if you look at our local situation, our African situation in Rwanda, where all the bad things are said about Kigami, mm. he is developing that country. Yes. And it's because he loves them, therefore we ensure that the systems work. But here, when we love you, the system yeah, shouldn't work. Yeah. So we got it all wrong, yeah. and that is our problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, <sighs> I, I have questions for you about 
how you developed because you're you're son of the land and like yeah. you said you grew up in Accra yeah. and you you lived with the people so I have questions about how you got to this philosophy that has clearly you know led the path for you and allowed you to lead differently I'll get to that but just on piggybacking on what we're speaking about there's a chapter in volume two of the book yeah. so building a winning team the UT story it's called politically exposed person yeah where you state very clearly that when you're doing business with UT financial services, you would not sponsor people who or sponsor political parties, right? You didn't have a problem with politically exposed persons if they had a business model Absolutely. or an idea that was going to bring some kind of benefit to the to citizenry. The country. Mm. Yeah. But as for the part, political party, you didn't want to deal with them because you felt that they're not doing what they're supposed to do for Ghanaians, and you didn't want to finance that ideology. Was it difficult doing business? Because, I mean, all of us grew up it's knowing absolutely you as the, the, the guy who didn't align himself with any mm. party, but he was doing business, and we were proud of that. Uh, but uh, in the end, because I wasn't aligned to anybody, uh, the bank, as soon as we went into problems, they collapsed it. Mm. Because I wasn't aligned to uh, any, any political mm. party or any powers that be. Because mm. people came to me, believe me or not, Let's go and see Asante Hins. This mm. one, they can't take the bank. And let's go and see President Kufo. And I said, but they, these people are not the governors of Bank mm. of Ghana. Yeah. I believe in institutions. I'm not going to see anybody. And I did not see anybody. Mm. And I said, if the decision by the people's representative, mm. as in the party in power, feel it's in the best interest of the country to collapse it, then so be it. Very well done. Mm. Very well done. Mm. So that is my philosophy. And that is what I believe in. I don't believe in the power, bit, but you see, I'm not right. I'm odd. <laughs> I'm, so, companies that probably are were doing worse or were not even well intentioned and things are still alive. Yeah. Because yeah. they will play the system as it is, and mm. I did not play the system as it is. So, you can't say uh, I was right, even though I was right. Mm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't allow systems to work. I mean, people come into power and then they target you, maybe because I didn't give money to the party. And therefore, eh, with all his money, because they per perceive that if you own a bank, you must have a lot of money. Mm. But the bank is different from me, Kofi yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And Ghanaians don't understand that. No. They see uh, institutions they are heading as their own property. Even when it's a government institution, they think it's their own property. Yeah, but it's the same chieftaincy mentality. Isn't exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, we have a great culture, great traditions, but when it comes to business and running our country, it is not what should happen. Mm. Because you see, a leader should first love his people, have faith in God, and have humility. But chieftaincy, there's no humility no in chieftaincy at all. You're literally a demigod. Exactly. <laughs> but you should have humility. I mean, when I was running U U UT, I would go to the cafeteria and we used to have free lunch. And I queue behind the last person mm. because everybody's work is important and everybody's to be respected. So I didn't come wow. as CEO has come, mm. so uh, they should serve me separately or yeah. I should come to. The, no, I queued behind everybody. And it was to send a message everybody's respected, everybody's time is respected. And of course, you have to do your work. Mm. And I, I had to apply the system consistently across board. Wow. And so people knew when someone was going to be sacked and when someone was going to be sanctioned in for you knew it. Mm. So at some point when my staff said, Chief Ukra, we and one crow and I said what? I said we are afraid of you and I said, Oh, me. Rather. How? <laughs> because I said yeah, only will be three laughing in the morning, but afternoon we hear you've sacked the pet. Yeah. I said, No, 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 you got it all wrong. Yeah. I have never ever sacked anybody before. Yeah. The system sacks them yeah. and they sack themselves. Yeah. And that's the way to run any institution. Yeah. But you will not be allowed to run it like that because mm. most people come and then uh, the pastor is the, like the head of HR. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, boss, sorry, boss, sorry, yeah. sorry. The pastor is appointing people for yeah. you. And those people, instead of coming <laughs> to help you, a church member, are rather going to feel they are important and yeah. they've got a base they can always refer to, so you yeah. can't sack them. Yeah. Yeah. And some are coming through your chiefs, mm. of course, from politicians and things like that. So, Africa, we are in a mess, mm, mm. big time. And it's getting worse. It's a trend that really was, worries me. Yeah. 
institutions are breaking down and they're breaking down faster than before. Yeah, but I think that it's possibly the only direction it's going to go because the, the, the more our You're population right. increases and the faster the world is moving in a certain direction of technology and exposure and everything else, the more difficult it will be for us to catch up. To even catch up. You are 100% right. I mean, when I was joining the army, I just wrote, because I saw advert in the paper, yeah. wrote, and I went, I was even toying with the interview, but I got selected. <laughs> now, to go for other ranks yeah. in immigration, fire service, any of the security services, mm. protocol is. And the protocol is, is from the politicians, some from some chiefs, and some wow. from some pastors. And the small that is wow. left, you pay as much as 10,000 CDs wow. before you, you are admitted. Wow. It never used to be. Wow. So you, you can see how bad it's getting. It's crazy. And then you have even police people or security people who, mm. are, who, are, who, are, who are finished their recruitment training. And they have to fund themselves by buying their own uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so when the policeman comes by the roadside, He's asking for one CD, so he can add it up. He's recouping his funds. Mm -hmm. He has every right yeah, to demand. Yeah, yeah, you can, I mean. But Captain, how does that make you feel? Because you feel, entered feel the Ghana horrible. Armed Forces to go and learn discipline. Yeah. So that you could now come back out, be a better man, yeah. and pay your, your dues to Ghana. To nation, yeah. So how does that make you feel? It makes me feel awful. I need I have to do something about it. That is why the books I'm writing to document it for the next generation, mm. for people who want to start businesses, to follow the same pattern and not to fall into the problems that I had, but be able to build companies that are sustainable mm. over time. You know, UT, when we started, we were employing only three people. Mm. And at our peak with the UT group, we were employing directly over 2,500 people. So you need a lot more of Prince Kofia Mwabin type. Yeah. 2,500 yeah. here, 10,000 here, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And that really creates the ocean. But mm. individuals who are favored and things like that, that one, the little drops of water will evaporate. Will evaporate. So I always Eesh. like to, to say that Ghanaian leaders are not vulnerable. You know, you get to the top and then it's, it's nice and shiny. Nobody hears the, the grit of the story. Every now and then they'll throw in the hustle part because it's cool to be a hustler. Yeah. You know, but Ghanaian leaders are not vulnerable. But you're extremely vulnerable. And you're vulnerable, you own your, your faults, you own your successes, and then you tell the story the way it has to be told, yeah. even if you're going to offend somebody. Yeah. The truth is the truth. Now, in doing that, I, I've, I've told you before that I thought that volume one should be studied in our universities because there's a whole lot there about how to become a leader and grow into a, a, an individual who can lead the cause of proper corporate governance. Now mm. I look at volume two, now that's a textbook right yeah. there. And I say this because when you look at the way our literature is, as the writer and me coming out, the way our literature is, our history, be it political, economic, social, economic history, these things are in our literature. It's not in some textbook. Yeah. That's not how we are wired. We mm. like stories. Mm. And you've told the story, but you've put it in there. What do you think of our educational system and what that has also contributed to what we've become or who we've become? Well, I think it was put succinctly by the dean of the business school, Professor Pauli. He says, our students are taught by through foreign books, what happened in Seattle and the U.S., like say, uh, how, uh, what do you call it, uh, Starbucks came <laughs> about, or some other program as to how. And you, it, it's not set in the African context, in the Ghanaian context. Mm. That's what makes this one different. Mm. How to build a company in Accra, Ghana, <laughs> and let yeah. it become international. Mm. Yeah and be respected by outside uh, um, uh, companies and institutions yeah. like the Diageo's and things to leverage their brand on a Ghanaian brand. Mm. See, when I talk about that, that is why it pains me a little bit that we should just collapse it. Take Kofiya Mwabi out. Mm. How many companies have we grown that has gone international, yeah. acquired a foreign-owned bank, and achieved all the recognition and things? Yeah. You don't just kill it because it should be there for people to see. That is why I, resigned as CEO when things were going down. I said, listen, I won't stay here and kill this company. Mm. Let's fresh Somebody people, fresh come, minds yeah. come to continue. That's what most people don't know. So when the bank was collapsed, I, as part of the restructuring, I had stepped back. Step back 
for that's what something I founded and created. I found a need mm -hmm. to step back and said, let people run it. Don't don't stay here and, and spoil it. That is why I find it very difficult when a state has been entrusted to you. God is there. Mm. You should love your people and do something for for the people. Yeah. But it looks like we are so callous and so. I don't know, devilish, mm. that we would do things yeah. and most of the times, most upon what they do is just destroy what is there and loot. Mm. And that is not right for this country. We yeah. deserve better. Mm. For goodness sake, how mm. much do you need to live? Yeah. You know? That's so, the point. How much do you much really need, need you know, to it's, live? It's, it's, it's unfortunate. You can buy it all, but really when you go to bed at night, it's only one bed you sleep in. So, exactly. And you wake up in the morning, it's only one, one washroom you yep. go to. So what do you need yeah. all of those extras for? Captain, how do you think, I mean, we've spoken a little bit about this in our conversations this morning, but how our bigger cultural system how it affects corporate culture, right? So, and I'm asking this, we're International Women's Month. You, you, have, you have placed a lot of women in strategic positions whenever you've had the chance to. Yeah. You, you talk about building your winning team, Pell and Son Mensa, I, she's I, the I, one you wanted. I, I, I you love, even gave her I, projects. I, I, I do better when, when there are women around me. <laughs> Like this interview, I, I no, feel but you, so. but you know something very <laughs> interesting. You're, you're not the first person I've heard say this. I've, I tend to find that people at the very top of, um, of running their institutions, which are actually very large, expansive institutions, tend to say the same thing about the loyalty of women. You know. Yeah, but there's a there's explanation for it. One woman are smarter than men. Okay. I don't care what anybody mm. says. I don't they, disagree with you. Oh yeah, yeah. They have yeah. a sense where they they <laughs> see a lot. I mean, men we are just by heart to zombie people. <laughs> Zombie and and in our particular setting, as in our traditions, women don't have too much burden on them. Yeah. If a woman gets married, they don't expect her to look after the families mm. and relations. But the man is expected to do mm. that. So you find that the men are easily corruptible because mm. they need more money it's to take out some more fancy here. As for the woman, once she's a corporate woman, for example. She has a car, she can do her nails and her hair, like what you've done. <laughs> and then, you know, with her kids, yeah. she's, okay. she's okay. And the man has to do everything mm. and bring the rest of the money. So they are less corruptible than the men. Mm. And corruption has eaten into our fabric. In fact, that is a very scary thing to even yeah. say. I think those who live by their values have become endangered species. By time, they are becoming diminishing mm. the system. Mm. Because your wife will even mock at you yeah. if you want to live yeah. on your salary. Yeah. So yeah. if you don't find some other means, you probably will have to steal and therefore you change, your values change. Yeah. And I find that as a country, we are losing our values. We have great values, but we've, we're losing it by the day, yeah. by the month. People are being converted into yeah. crooks and things yeah. like that yeah. because I always of think, hardships. I always think of the Edinkra symbols and I just think about what these things mean. And this must have been... We, we created these things because that's what we valued, you know. So if, that, if those were our values, what's happened to us? Because we don't live by almost none of them, you know. But I, do we know them? Um, uh. Not really. But you see, the thing is that when leadership fails, then everything else will fail. Mm. And leadership is failing in our homes, for example, mm. where kids are not checked. Sometimes mm. the kids are even parenting the, the, the yeah. mother and father. Yeah. <laughs> and even in uh, yeah. some of the world to do homes, I mean, you go and buy question papers and bring to your son or yeah. your children. And then you take your kid who has aggregate 40 to school and go and pay. Your kid is seeing yeah. that too. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. uh, you see kids who are bribing their teachers yeah. in the schools. Yeah for favors and things yes. like that. So right from where you're supposed to build the core, the values to take into adulthood, we're killing it. Yeah. It's so, so dangerous. So you come into institutions and it's gone. That's, the, that's become the norm. In the, our educational institutions, people do anything for grace, women sleeping with some people, uh, people paying for their grace and things like that. And they carry through to the institution they're working yeah. with. Yeah. It's, it is scary. Mm. And I, there's this story that I keep telling people. That when I was a kid, my father was my best friend. So in my adulthood, I would go, we'd go out and drink and things like that. One day he said, Kofi, I, there's something I have to tell you. 
And I said, what haven't you told me? I mean, we've talked about everything. They said, no. <laughs> Your grandfather, whom I was named after, he was a royal called Ohineba Kufiamo. I'm very rich. Mm. He said he opposed independence for the black person. Wow. Yeah. He, did, he said, he <coughs> told people that, listen, if the black man says he's going to rule himself, I tell you we are in trouble. And they were saying, hey, wow. Ohineba, what a thing to say. After all, the yeah. five Kwame Nkrumah and Jebi Danko were being Ghanaians, were euphoric about it, because, yeah, he did also, and he said, no. And then finally he said, me, I, I'm old, I'm going to die. Mm. I'm going to wait for you, mm. that's my father. And you come and tell me whether I was right or wrong. Wow. So when my father told me this, I said, Kofi, the story I'm taking to your grandfather is going to be horrible. Yeah. But I'll tell him to wait because you are going to come. <laughs> and maybe you bring a different story. <laughs> then I told my son about five years ago, and yeah. I said, Koku, this is the story there. I'm going to tell them that. <laughs> but they should wait for you. Yeah. But instead of just going to tell them the story, I decided that I should sow some seed and mm, do something mm, different. Mm, mm. Because God has given me all this exposure, been successful, of course, uh, went down in the end. But what he's given by way of knowledge and expertise and experience and things like that, it's still with me. Mm. And I think the problem is with leadership. So let me tackle leadership. So my story when I go is that it's still bad but, but we've started yeah. something. something so let's wait yeah. for my kids your kids your grandchildren <laughs> and things like that and maybe the narrative yeah. will change yeah the 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 ut story um what was the financial sector like and the paradigm shift that happened when you know you brought about the ut um, 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 you, you know, unique trust uh, financial services. Um, what was it like? What did you bring? And is that change going to take us into the future in terms of will it be sustainable? Part of it. I mean, we did a lot, even though when I say it, it's like I'm blowing my own trumpet please or something. Please do but blow You're it. allowed to, please. But, but you see, <laughs> the thing is, when we, when we came on the scene, yeah. Going to the banks and things to take a loan was, <laughs> it was for a very few people. Mm. Certainly not the SME and the individuals and things like that. Okay. So we came and changed the narrative completely. And the loan in 48 hours was ahead of, even in yeah. most countries, yeah. uh, we have they people coming no, from Germany say to say that yeah. this <laughs> is not possible even in Germany where the structures are yeah. there. So we came and aggressively changed it. Yeah. And then when we even went into banking, a standard banking service was started by us. Because one day I said, ah, workers go to work and close about 5 o'clock. Yeah. Then the banks close those days about yeah. 2 o'clock or 1.30. Yeah, and I said, yeah. I, said, yeah. I said, no, 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 no. We have to wait for the workers whose money we are keeping. Yeah. So we extended banking to 6 o'clock okay. and also introduced a weekend banking. Wow. Then we did uh, mobile banking. We did a whole lot of things. Mm. And so now when people are, the big banks are say, oh, come to work for a loan and things like that, I said, well, <laughs> this is the legacy we left with the system. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was unheard of. Mm. A lot of things that the banks are doing now, but for the competition we gave them, they would not have moved away from their, their, their comfort zone. Yeah. And uh, even now, I don't know of any place I can go and take a business loan in 48 hours. 48 hours, hours no. I don't Not either. Yet, Business anyway. loan? No. 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 It's only salary loan where they secure yeah. the salary yeah. and then they business can give it to you no. at the moment. But yeah. business loan, study the loan, visit the site, do everything like we used to do and follow up with advice and also collection. I think people don't have the trust in the system to do it. But Even with all the digital innovations we are coming up with? How do you secure a collateral which is probably not even right? Mm. So you can have anything that you have. Yeah. You know, let's say, <laughs> we are generally bad people. <laughs> <laughs> so your system should be very tight yeah. and should manage all foreseeable risks. Mm. To the large, you, you can't do 100%, but at least to a larger extent, yeah. you are in control about 90% of the time yeah. because some of the loans will go bad for yeah. sure. But you see, the thing about lending is, Ghanaians have a very funny attitude about lending. They think if you go to take a loan, uh, it's shameful and people shouldn't know you've taken a loan. It's exactly the opposite. Because mm. people who go to take loans are people who are enterprising, want to change their status and want to improve and help other people and mm. grow their businesses. Mm. That is why we're supporting those people. It's not because they are useless or they, they fall short of anything. It's yeah. because 
Because the people yeah, don't really bigger. want to work are the people sitting under trees and, mm. and doing draft and all yeah. that. But people who want loans, I respect them a lot. And so we should change the narrative. People should stand up and say, I owe. Because listen, the bank you're going to, mm. that bank owes more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Because if the bank didn't owe us, yeah. where were you going to find the money? Yeah. Right. So really, lending is a noble thing to do. And owing, is, there's nothing wrong with owing. And that brings me to something that people accuse me of that. I said, the president or minister of finance came to me for a loan. It wasn't to uh, denigrate them or anything. I was just trying to send a message that, listen, at some point, we all need some help to realize our objectives. Yeah. And the people at the top now were even there. So yeah. don't worry about it. Move yeah. and take a facility if you can pay for it and change your position. Mm. You know, so we, these are some of the things, traditions that we have. I don't know what, why we think if you you you, you owe, then then it's like you, are, you, you failed in society. Mm. No, 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 I mean, no, no. Meanwhile, the, the more developed countries, the entire financial systems are built on the concept of lending and borrowing. The Absolutely. credit card. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, yeah. people Absolutely. live by the credit yeah. card. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, so uh, it's been quite an interesting journey, but I want uh, people to read the books that I've written because it is a legacy that I'm leaving for the next generation and entrepreneurs and things like that, so that they will know what is right yeah. and be uh, strong in their convictions and also avoid the pitfalls. Because my father used to say that experience can be very expensive, and I know that. Mm. And, but... If you have soft ears, you can get it for free. Mm. So I want, I, exactly, I want people to read this yeah. with soft ears and get all the experience for free mm. so they can grow better institutions mm. and uh, make Ghana a better place. Because if you get a lot of people doing what is right to yeah. grow their businesses, then of course Ghana will be the winner. So your, the title of this book is uh, Building, Building a Winning, a winning Team. team. Yeah. Yeah. What's the most central um, piece to building a winning See, it team. takes off from the first book. Mm. Now, the first book is when I left the uh, university and went to armed forces and humble beginnings mm. and starting a business, mm. where to get the funding from, ideas about how to even start um, uh, employing people, the challenges of a new business, because we started from uh, one room in Cantamanto mm. up to a point where we fought the, the, uh, the regulator and all sort of things yeah. to be stabilized. Mm. Now, this second book actually starts from where the first book left off, mm. more or less, where we now introduce structures and systems okay. and strategies for growth and things like that. So we grew not only as a financial institution, but also grew subsidiaries like UT Properties, UT Logistics, UT Private Securities, and even UT Nigeria, UT South Africa, mm. uh, and others, you know. So it's about how to take your business to a next level of expanding the business, taking advantage of uh, other business around you, and even going international. Mm. So this is very heavy book, but it's got also a very interesting story that will make you laugh <laughs> because we have some bad clients and how we related to them. <laughs> and things that is all in there, it does. Know. It is. You know, and, uh, and, uh, because I wanted to be authentic. People say I don't have filters, but I want to be authentic. It's not just that, and somebody came and took this. I said, this as soon as he came mm, mm. and took a facility for ABC, and this was his behavior, yeah. and this is how we ended up. Yeah. And it's a fact. You can, you can go to court if you want to go yeah. to court, but it's a fact, it's, and I know you cannot go yeah. to court because it's a fact. It's a fact. And, and if you even misbehaved and you were... You misconducted yourself. You want to go to court and tell that. So you can't. <laughs> they are lucky that uh, yeah. they, they probably had some uh, advantage of it. Well, Captain, so building structures and going by the structure, there's a particular instance in this book where a young man had come to you or to the, to the institution. He was looking for a loan because he was going to do some haulage, you know, anything from Takradi or, or something of the sort. And it was clearly a loan, a financial conversation, you know, a loan. But instead of giving it to Captain Coombson, who ideally would have handled your operations, you gave it to Pearl and Mensa and her team. And from the book, Captain Coombson was not too excited about that. Now, I'm asking this question because systems are going by them. But as a leader, at what point do you know that I need to do something different apart from what is documented as a systemic process? 
so that we can get the desired result. You see, as we were growing, um, really, we were known to be hard at collection. If you have to go and collect 50,000, 60,000, that way you can go and raffle him up and then shake him a bit and you come up with it. But when you give him millions, you go then the money to do what? You need to be constructive here and sit and understand the project, understand the cash flows and know where you can get your money. So that is why, how can we move from the hard, take the money and bring it to where we structure the debt because we have to structure it over more than a year Mm. And we have to really see the cash flow realistically when they will be coming in and how we can be paid out of it. So that was when we were evolving, more or less doing more banking than the UT mm. way of doing things. And those, those were the things that I realized that, listen, this one, don't send anybody there in the night. Mm. Your money, one million CDs, 10 million, it will not come if you go there in the night. <laughs> so believe in the process and monitor it daily to make sure that when the money's come, you are there. And uh, it didn't turn out well for that particular project because uh, I think uh, certainly there were some defaults. And then, if you remember, it came to a point where, apart from land, we even had to go and, and repair a government bridge so that they could actually move, move the goods the quickly. Goods. Wow. Yeah. So we're on top of it, but you know, it was too much for us. And I think we it were a bit more than we could chew. Mm. But again, that's the beauty of this book. I documented failures, especially failures. Successes, you could get it along. Everybody knows what UT became and what UT did and all that. But the failures and the hardships in growing the business mm. is what I put in the book more than anything else. Mm. You know. In building UT and building a team and you know, this, this institution that has become a part of the pride of Ghana. How did it affect your family? Family, hmm. I don't normally like talking about family, but I have a great family. Uh, I'm very close to my kids. They understand me. I've, just as I run my business, I'm very transparent with my kids. From when they are kids, I mean, some of them, they will be riding on my back. Me, I'm the horse, and then they will ride on my back. So, we don't have anything that is hidden from one another. Mm. So, for example, even when the UT bank collapsed and, you know, kids in school or at work, they want to probably GR2 and things. My kids were rather comfortable and said, we know that, you know, you're right. And uh, we don't mm. have a problem. I was worried for them, mm. but they were rather worried for me. Yeah. So, uh, in growing the business, to come back to your question about growing the business, Somehow, I wasn't directly responsible for raising the kids at that stage. And it's very interesting. I started Unique Trust after my wife left me and left okay. me with my, the kids that we had. Now, that was when it hit me as a Kofi, you have become a failure. Mm. At the age of 44, 45, you mm. don't even have family. You are broke. And... Well, I had made some money and losses some time ago. I said, you must do something. Hmm. And I will not tolerate this denial from the banks and so and so forth. So somewhere there, and when I, I tell you, I, said, I started Unique Trust when I was 45. Hmm. So when I see kids now, 20-something, 30-something, wanting to ride in Mercedes-Benz or Lamborghini, <laughs> I said, when you are 60, what are you going, what to, are you going yeah. to drive? And you are in a rush. So... When you are young, experiment, you can fail, but it is not the end of the world. Mm. So I started at the age of 45 with no kids, no wife in the home. I had a girlfriend who was my regular, who even typed the report I was writing and things like that. So my wife did well, looked after the kids up to a point. And then the kids, of course, when I was in a position to look after them, they came. And uh, I brought them all together. I will live together and raise them well. Uh, one is a medical uh, doctor, one is an entrepreneur. I'm sure you know how. Uh, all of them, actually. Uh, uh, <laughs> all of them. Uh, and then uh, one is an investment banker, <laughs> one is working also with uh, good companies. So they all, they all turn out well. Mm. It's all a matter of managing it. But I've always been there for them. They know exactly how I feel. And I am interested in their problems and their development. And God has been good to us. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, you launched this book. How many more 
Uh, There's a third one coming. I want okay. it to land. Okay. <laughs> you know, when we started, we were going to write a book on UT, mm. right? Then George, my co-author, said, listen, the information you're giving me, we can't write one book. It will be either too big, therefore not user-friendly, yeah. or I think the best thing is let's do two books. So I looked at the information I'd given and I said, okay, let's do two books. So we did the first book, that mm -hmm. is uh, Humble Beginnings, and the second was supposed to conclude. But the second one was so important about building companies, international companies, and you don't just want to wishy-washy it. Yeah. Around. So we said, okay, fine. I think the bank itself has a whole lot. Don't let's dilute it yeah. with this one. Yeah. So this one takes us almost up to when we became a bank. The third book, hopefully by the end of this year, or maybe I'll probably do it on my oh, next, yeah, next birthday, birthday. <laughs> will be purely about the bank. Okay. And that, again, will be no bars, no bar hold, no or bars bar hold, or whatever. Yeah, no bars and, and we will document for posterity state what the bank did when we came, uh, how we came about, what we did right, what we did wrong, the action the government took, uh, whether it was right or wrong, and it includes a lot of things that people don't even know. The mm -hmm. IFC was a shareholder, DG oh, okay. was a shareholder okay. of the bank, and uh, we had all sort of issues uh, in processing, in, in culture, the culture change, and uh, so a whole lot of things. And I think it's a lot that we have to, mm, to, to, to tell the, the, mm. to the Ghanaians. So now, you launched the ET story, Building a Winnie with your co-author, George, on the 22nd of February, which is your 71st birthday. Yeah. On that night, you also launched the PK Amwa Bing Leadership Foundation. Foundation. And you had a birthday party yeah, as well. It always party. has to be a party for <laughs> <with> you. <laughs> but let's take, we have a report, a CNR report, City Newsroom report, because we were there. Let's just take a look at that and we'll come back and we'll talk about the foundation. What causes change is leadership. And when we talk leadership, it's not the group at the top, I'm talking about the man at the very top. And we've seen leadership in Africa failing even in our homes, parents are no more responsible. You hear parents paying bribes to get their kids into schools. You hear parents buying exam questions for their kids. It's unimaginable. Then you come into institutions. Then you go into politics, forget it. It's this kind of leadership which will really make sure that we stay there and get worse. And we have to start. And then if you heard about the issue of abundance, before you lead, you should understand the people that you're leading, where they're coming from. And really, 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 Africa, it's not that we are bad people, but nature made us who we are. If you have kids and you think you love one of them and you dote on that child, 100% that child will not turn out well. And we were put in the best part of the world and we've lived in abundance for the longest. Therefore, we have created cultures, behaviors, traditions that are negative. We have to fashion out how we can revolutionize the mindset of the African leader. Unless we change it around and say, forget about the old times, forget about the cultures and traditions, this is the way to go. The UT story, building a winning team. Welcome back. This is Still Breakfast Daily. We're still continuing our conversations with Captain Prince Kofi Amwa Bing, a legend, a living one at that. Now, you just saw some footage from a report that has been filed by the City Newsroom. 22nd of February, he launched together with his co-author the second installment of a three-part series, The UT Story. But on that night as well, the PK Amwa Bing Leadership Foundation was launched. So let's take a look at, you know, Bit of a mini documentary about the foundation and then we talk to captain for some reason god put us in the best part of this earth where the climate is fantastic there's no snow the only small variations in temperature and the vegetation is green almost all the time almost all the areas and there are no natural hazards people just lived in abundance you didn't have to struggled to be fed, and they lived in such a condition or environment for hundreds of thousands of years, if not million years. It's a fact that in this world, the environment shapes the lives of every living thing. And for our environment, 
it made us create cultures, behaviors, attitudes around the environment that we had, the environment of abundance. We are lazy generally. We don't plan for tomorrow. We don't keep time. We don't know maintenance. We are disrespectful. We don't care about the general good. All these can be explained by the theory of abundance. I'm Captain Prince Kofi Amwabing, retired. And I'm an African business leader and uh, started business in Ghana uh, after leaving the army some 40 years ago. We started from one room, the center business area of Accra, and with a staff of three, and grew this to become the biggest non-bank financial institution in about 2010. When we transformed it to become a bank, a universal bank called UT Bank. After the bank had also achieved some successes, the bank obviously ran into problem and the government decided not to bail it out, but to collapse it. Now, after that, I have decided to form a PK Amwabin Leadership Foundation. The aim is to actually document the transition from a one-room business into a universal bank with affiliate and subsidiaries like UT Properties, UT Logistics, UT Private Securities, UT Life and other companies. And we became a household name and we built a brand that was known across Africa, and a brand that had even footprints as in offices in Nigeria, South Africa and Hamburg in Germany. Please follow us on our social media pages and sign up to be a part of an exciting experience revolutionizing the mindset of the African leader. And this is a sure way of making sure that Africa really gets developed in the long run. So a little bit about the PK Amwabing Leadership Foundation. And we've been speaking to Captain Prince Kofi Amwabing retired this morning about his book, about life, about his concepts and ideas of leadership, how he has done it, what didn't work, what has worked, what we must do. And when I say he's a son of Ghana, that we should celebrate. I hope we've sort of proven that. But Captain, let's talk about the foundation. A lot of people have fanciful ideas and theories, but they don't do anything to make those things materialize for the bigger populace. Now, you've, you've done, you've been in the army, you've done business, you've done things, ah, now you've come to do foundation. <laughs> I sort of have a bit of an idea of what the answer is, but why at this time the PKM are being Leadership Foundation and what is it setting out to do? Okay, that's, that's a beautiful question. Um, <clears throat> I think in your latter years, it all should be about giving. Because mm. you've acquired all the experiences, successes, failures, you matured, and you have to give back to the system. I mean, we're all here really to make the world a better place for the creator. Yeah. And it's not about us. I tell you, this was not about you at mm. all. It's about what you can do to impact people's lives. So the idea about the foundation is to leave the legacy that God has endowed me with things, experiences and everything for the next generation so that it will be easier for them. Now, as a content of what we're going to do, and uh, it's still at a formative stage, uh, we're going to go to tertiary schools because it's about catching them young. Okay. Uh, a lot of these people, you know, government can't provide jobs for them. Mm. So we we'll go to them to te teach them about entrepreneurship, the basics, how to start. Because a lot of people have ideas and mm. they want to do something, mm. but they do it wrong. Mm. They do it wrong mostly because they are not disciplined mm. enough. I have seen some young men and women who start and they get recognition and they are probably giving a bit of money by some foundation. As soon as they get the money, boom, mm. they become the frame <laughs> and they blow the money. They know how to show money. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> think them about building capacity and avoiding waste. Yeah. So we're doing that with the tertiary institutions. I think eventually we even probably go to secondary institutions yeah. because we should, we should be... Earlier. Yeah, we yeah. yeah. should build a value for me. Then, of course, we've got entrepreneurs that we are mentoring and we are taking them through the rules, what we call intentional mentoring. I think we follow it and uh, do strategy session for you and move to the next step. And we say that by the next two years, you must be here and so on and so forth. 
And then we also tackle the corporates, you know. Uh, the corporate culture for most companies is not good. So we engage some of the corporates, so we sit with their managers mm -hmm. and even with the heads of the corporates and they learn from what uh, I've been through and then we tell them what they need to do. For example, people don't love the companies that they work for. They think mm. they have a family and this one, they only come here to make money. But yeah, I the, tell the people that, yeah, but I tell it's people that, listen, your first you're family, yeah. believe me or not, your first family is, your, is at your workplace. Mm. That is where you spend the best part of your life. You get up in the morning at 6 o'clock, you stay there till about 8 p.m. Yeah. and go home to your so-called nuclear family. Mm. And therefore, if you are not happy in your workplace, your life is yeah. being wasted. Mm. So create an environment where people are happy and anxious to come to work and mm. live and together make money and build some, some, something for the nation and yeah. for themselves. And of course your future even depends on it, your pension and everything comes from your work. So love your work and do it properly. Mm. So we'll do the corporate bit. But I'm also thinking that what made me who I am was because I went through the military. So I've been toying with the idea of uh, making the PK Moabin scholars taste a bit of military training. I, I like it. I if it's it. even for I two weeks, it. they should taste it because it brings absolute discipline, it brings humility, and it fine tunes the leadership qualities yeah. in you. Brilliant I think you should idea. do a month or six Brilliant weeks. Like um, if we're looking at the expense, we're looking at the intensity of it, if we can get a, a very intense one, which will not cause my two weeks. But you see, some of these things, I need to go to some corporate entities and probably some individuals to, to help uh, in the funding of it. Because mm. even in military training, we have to pay something. Mm. And then put, put them in boot camp, putting them in all sorts of places to imbibe ideas into them and to give them the uh, intentional mentorship. Mm. Uh, my bank has been taken, so I don't have the money to do it. But I want to do it. And I'll do it with the help of other people, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love oh, it. Um, so, I, I mean, sorry, I know we spoke about the corporate bit, you know, going into the educational institution, but the arts, are we also looking at creative entrepreneurship entities as well to mentor? Yeah, but uh, you see, we don't want to direct you into a special area. You should come up with where you think yeah. you have a special core, mm. if I should put it that way. Mm. Because I meet people with fantastic ideas that probably wouldn't even come to me. And I have to learn and see where they're coming from. And then we give them the soft issues, the values, because mm. the underlying every vision and mission must be the value that will take you there. Mm. If you get the values wrong, forget mm. it. It can mm. be the best plan in the whole world, mm. you'll not succeed. No, that's amazing because even the way you're approaching it is from a space of humility, yeah. that you haven't seen everything, mm. you don't know everything no, that's going on. So come to us yes. and let's help you. Tell us about it, we'll learn from what you're thinking and with our expertise, we'll help you to fine tune it and then put it on track and put milestones that we want to achieve. And we we'll track it with you and we'll be happy mm. for you to achieve it. I honestly, <laughs> I wish we had another hour because <laughs> there's so many things that are going on in my head at the same time. But um, we really appreciate your time this morning. I, love I think it. it's a fantastic book. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Have and, uh, any of the universities approached you? Ghanaian universities? Uh, I, think, universities? I think it's early yet, but we're working on it uh, to try and get the uh, students to actually read the books. I think funding may be a bit difficult, so we probably get sponsors or we'll give that a discounted price so mm. they can afford it. Mm. You know, but mm. for now, if anybody wants to get some of the books, you can get it at EPP Bookshop or Kingdom Bookshops, or Airport Shell, Bachona Total, Osu Total, uh, Book Nook. Dot store. Dot store. Yes. Yeah. And okay. uh, well, now we put it on Amazon, so you can oh, find wonderful. it on Amazon. Wonderful. Yeah. And I will personally champion this course. Thank to you. get these books no, we need where to. they need to we be. Need I, to. Will yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I will champion it. I will champion yeah. it. I will try to I do the audio the too, audio of okay. the book. Okay, an audio book. Good. Yeah, Good. Uh, so we, we want to disseminate the information in it as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So there's a message here. This um, come is... Uh, it says here, good morning. I enjoyed the, the live interview with Captain Kofi Amwabin today. The Ghanaian situation can be turned around if we identify the root cause of our predicament. 
Corruption is an effect, not a cause. Fall in our value systems is due to corruption and also an effect, not a cause. Poor governance <laughs> is also a byproduct of corruption. We can change the status quo only when we accept the root cause of corruption and agree to act in humility to bring expected change. All right. Okay, and, there's uh, another one here. Okay. Good morning, Captain. Thank you so much for mentoring us through the TV. I hope to meet you one day. Our leaders and those who are above us do not take the time to mentor us, and so we are failing every day. Thank you for making yourself a mentor for you. Don't do have negative ones. I enjoy the negative <laughs> you know that, that no negative No, there's nobody <laughs> sending negative messages. But you see, that's the thing. Sometimes the negative voices are so loud that they are the ones we hear everywhere. But now, when there's a bit of quiet, then the positive ones, you realize that they actually yeah. outnumber the negative yeah. ones. Yeah. And I think people do appreciate <laughs> an authentic person and, oh, um, and, and authentic words that are spoken so uh, for me i'm excited i've told you already i need to talk to you about some other yeah. things i have in mind and uh, some work that i need I'm to his get done. so, so fast and she come through you. <laughs> You, know, <laughs> you, see the, you see how the corruption comes. You know? no, the you people know, are going to collect you know, it on the their side. Thing is that in Ghana, <laughs> in the traditional setting, we have uh, oh, uh, the one that you go through to, to uh, beg. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so the one you go to. So there are, there are chances that the, the linguists, yeah. then there are the ones that, oh, what do they call them? So you have to go to them before yeah. you can Special get to Special appointment. Wow. Yes. Oh, why is yes. it? Uh, excuse I'm me. I forgot what, what they call them. But they are the ones you go to. They yeah. are the ones who will tell you when you're coming, bring one ah. shot, bring 500. Jan Twa. Jan Twa. Jan Twa. Jan Twa. Jan Twa. Jan Twa. That's his role. Jan Twa. Jan Twa. So you can sing as much as yeah. you want to sing Jan Twa. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, it's my pleasure. This has been a fantastic thing. And yeah. uh, 